pledge i commit to be vigilant and bear in mind at all times the risk to myself and my colleagues from covid-19 i promise to take all necessary precautions that prevent the spread of this deadly virus i promise to follow and encourage others to follow the key covid appropriate behaviors to always wear a mask face cover especially when in public places to maintain a minimum distance of 6 feet from others to wash my hands frequently and thoroughly with soap and water together we will win this fight against covid-19 morning students so last class we started with a concept called uh, the rise of uh, british power in bengal so already many concepts we have discussed under this first and foremost we talked about uh, english east india company and british east india company i mean uh, french east india company who they are so we talked in the first class then we talked about uh, the rivalry between uh, French East India Company and English East India Company, which was called as Anglo-French rivalry, which led to the Three Carnatic Wars. At the end of the Three Carnatic Wars, the British uh, made the foundation, or British started, uh, I mean, uh, having a political domination over, uh, I mean, uh, slowly over India. Then the French East India Company was, uh, I mean, uh, moved out of uh, India. then after that we talked why british people i mean opted the bengal uh, the particular place where they thought of uh, uh, i mean uh, lay i mean uh, thought of making their foundation in uh, bengal for that the reasons we had discussed in the previous class of several reasons uh, keeping the several reasons to capture or to uh, i mean take bengal under the control of uh, the british so they created an uh, two historical battles what one one was uh, battle of plassey which was fought between uh, british and uh, i mean uh, sirajullah -Zullah, in which sirajullah -Zullah was defeated and uh, i mean uh, mir jafar the commander in chief of uh, nawab force was made as an a puppet ruler of uh, i mean uh, bengal then after that Uh, Mir Jafar, when he failed to attempt the needs of an British, so they removed Mir Jafar and they made a Mir Qasim as a Nawab of an, uh, I mean, uh, Bengal, the son-in-law of, uh, I mean, Mir Jafar. And as you all know, Mir Jafar was a bit uh, good and efficient king since I mean he was. So slowly he began a uh, fight with the British. So in seventeen sixty-three. the war took place between uh, mir qasim and british in which mir qasim was defeated where mir qasim uh, ran away to aud so there he makes a uh, combined force with uh, i mean uh, suhazullah and uh, shah alam second the mughal emperor and the uh, emperor of aud so keeping uh, the king of aud so with that combined force in uh, 1764 the second historical battle took place the battle of boxer so in that battle of boxer so as you all know the combined force were defeated by i mean uh, defeated by the british and uh, suhaz dullah and uh, shah alam second these two people were uh, asked to sign a treaty of halhabad in 1765 in which many uh, provisions and their privileges they lost to uh, i mean british uh, the people british uh, i mean east india company so like that with the battle of plassey and battle of boxer the political domination as a result if you see the british people became an a real ruler of an a bengal so when they became an a real ruler of an a bengal in 1765 
when uh, at the same time uh, robert clive was made as an a uh, governor of this particular uh, bengal so when robert clive was made as an a uh, governor of bengal so he introduced an a uh, policy called dual government policy in bengal in 1765 it was introduced by robert clive so in 1765 so this dual government policy says that bengal will be under the control of two masters where the people should be responsible to two groups one master race that is nawab as usual the nawab of bengal then one will be the british east india company so bengal is answerable or bengal will be under the control of two personalities how these two personalities are going to rule that will be the definition for an dual government okay how they are going to rule if you see the nawab was responsible for general administration the administration of bengal will be under the nawab law and order the maintenance also will be under the nawab justice also will be under the control of nawab so nawab will be given the taking care of general administration maintenance of law and order and justice whereas the english east india company will have complete the power over military power and as well as right to collect revenue and use the revenue of bengal by an i mean english east india company okay so this agreement was known as dual government policy okay and now you can see here among two masters the benefit was for an the english east india company because they can collect the revenue they are uh, the people who are going to use the revenue of uh, bengal for the english east india company not for the people of i mean uh, the bengal okay so that benefited i mean uh, only english east india company this dual government policy okay if you say the features of this dual government policy first and foremost according to dual government policy if you see the features the company enjoyed the power without any responsibilities because complete responsibility goes under the nawab they had no responsibility on the people okay whereas since they were not having a responsibility but they enjoyed the revenue and the military power and the use of revenue in bengal second one if you see the nawab the one who was ruling who one was given a uh, general administration and maintenance of law and order justice he was been burdened with an responsibility of administration if he want to run an administration he should have an uh, some source source is nothing but revenue but the revenue is uh, under the control of british uh, english east india company then i mean uh, through which source he is going to develop the run the administration okay so that is the reason since no source were there without the uh, resources the administration was asked to run by nawab which nawab felt it is a border okay then the revenue was collected by an uh, indian officials okay revenue was collected by an indian official who is appointed by english east india company okay if it was not under the control of nawab it was under the control of the english i mean indian official who is been appointed by an the company okay that is the one third aspect which we are having it then practice of corruption started to exist that led the peasants peasants are nothing but farmers that led farmers to the condition of very terrible utter misery life okay utter misery life was there for an peasants because of the corruption that was practiced in bengal by the english east india company and even by the indian officials okay that's the one prior things which were happening then company took no interest okay no interest on the welfare of the people of bengal especially at the time of famine there was a gap i mean bengal was hit by a great famine where the even the nawab of bengal even the uh, english east india company they never bothered about the people okay so they were never had an welfare of the people and the concern of the i mean uh, uh, under the kind of people's concern over the english state company or now and the last one if you see the evils of dual government collapsed the entire the administration of i mean entire the administration and the economy of bengal okay, completely it got uh, i mean it collapsed the good system of uh, i mean good system of administration and good system yeah. of uh, i mean uh, the economy of a bengal was completely the uh, collapsed by an uh, i mean uh, by the uh, policy of dual government almost by the 1772 such situation 1772 we are having a changes in the administrative system of uh, bengal 
So how the changes if you see, the changes was the company appointed Varan Astin as a governor of Bengal in 1772. So Varan Astin becomes the governor of uh, Bengal so in 1772. The first step which he took when he took an, uh, I mean, uh, uh, governorship of uh, Bengal, the first thing so what he did was so completely he abolished the dual government and he established direct and the complete control of Bengal under English East India Company. There is no two masters. There is no two masters. There will be only one master in a Bengal and that master will be the English East India Company. That system he brought it out. And what about the say, one more master that is Nawab. They were deposed and they were removed from the Nawab ship and they just they were given pension off. Okay, so they were given a pension and the Nawab ship was removed, direct the English East India Company took under the control. And in order to develop the good, uh, I mean, system of administration and economy of Bengal, so Warren Astin came out with uh, many reforms, administrative reforms. He brought out, he just altered. Okay, so one fine day, the Warren Astin laid the foundation in uh, 1772, where a system of government he organized in uh, Bengal. So one fine day, the Bengal started to become so one of the most the profit and the foundation and the prosperous uh, province for uh, Bengal. Okay, that is the one aspect so which we are having. So like this, dual government policy was implemented. So the policy was implemented and uh, the policy brought out a lot of, uh, I mean, changes in uh, Bengal. But at the end of the dual government policy, the end of the dual government policy in 1772, which was made by Varan Astin. Once again, it reformed uh, the Bengal into an, uh, a very good system of government to an uh, English East India Company. So that's about the British, uh, I mean, finally with the British power in Bengal, finally with the Battle of Plaza and Battle of Boxer by 1765 onwards, or 1765 onwards, the Bengal completely goes under the control of I mean the real ruler of an, uh, uh, Bengal, the British people becomes and from there the British started their political domination so over our country. So when they began the political domination over our country, so there were uh, some more, I mean uh, you now the first important thing they were, I mean Bengal was the first uh, important place which they fixed to capture. So now the Bengal is captured under, uh, I mean uh, the government, I mean uh, English East India companies. I mean with Battle of Plaza and Battle of Boxer. So at the same time, so in order to expand or in order to expansion of British, okay, another, uh, still more, some more places they wanted to, still the entire India they wanted under their control. So for that purpose, so British introduced, uh, I mean, some strategical uh, or strategic, I mean, the policies they had introduced. Okay, in that one is dual government policy, I mean, which was introduced. 1765 and 1772, it got, uh, I mean, uh, end. Again, after that, some more policies were introduced, like subsidiary line policy or doctrine of lapse policy. Then, uh, I mean, uh, uh, misgovernance policy. Then again, we are having uh, the policy of divide and rule. So like this, we are having many policies which been introduced by the British. So that we, I mean, uh, we are going to see in the coming classes. The last topic of the uh, British we are talking. So now Bengal has been captured. After Bengal capturing, in order to capture remaining places. So what are the policies which the British introduced? That we are going to see in the next class. That is the topic, second topic. So the British expansion. Okay. British expansion or British in order to expand their uh, power in India. So what are the tragedies they did it in India? That we are going to see in the next class. So this is about the, I mean, uh, rise of uh, British uh, uh, power, so in uh, Bengal. So very important is two historical battles are so very important. So please just go through it. And uh, if you have any doubts, let me know. Thank you.